Welcome back to the Coastal Discovery Van. This activity will explore the impact that marine debris and microplastics have on marine life and the importance of plankton communities in a healthy ecosystem. It will also introduce the rocky shore ecosystem. First, we're going to explore the world of marine debris. From space, our planet appears as a tiny blue dot. No matter where you live on a blue planet, you're connected to the sea but the seas are under threat. Marine debris is any persistent solid material that's created and disposed of or abandoned into our rivers and oceans. Essentially, marine debris is trash. As these materials break down in our environment, it gets smaller and smaller, becoming microplastics, small fragments of plastic, typically less than five millimeters in size. Let's head over to the station and check them out under a microscope. These plastics have been detected in all of the world's oceans and in many freshwater systems, accumulating on shorelines, suspended in surface waters, and being ingested by plankton, fish, birds, and marine mammals. Marine debris ingestion and entanglement directly impacts marine life. Studies show that ingested marine debris is quite common in samples of dead and captured seabirds and turtles, indicating that many marine organisms mistake small bits of plastic and trash for food. An example of this is the rubber jellyfish. Here's our friend Millie to talk about it. Rubber jellyfish are helium balloons that have been accidentally released and when they reach the stratosphere, explode and shred before falling back to the ground. When they float in the oceans, they look a lot like jellyfish, and many turtles think they are. Now, let's learn about plankton. Come over to the microscope for a closer look. They're incredibly important to our ecosystem. There are two types of plankton, phytoplankton and zooplankton. Phytoplankton are responsible for most of the transfer of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to the ocean through photosynthesis. They are the primary food source for the zooplankton and together they form the base of the oceanic food chain. Larger zooplankton, fish and mammals depend on these plankton for their survival. Plankton play an important role in the recycling and remineralization of materials and energy within the food chain. The plankton food web underpins and determines the amount of life in the sea. Quite simply, without the plankton, there wouldn't be any fish in the sea for other creatures to eat. Have a look at this great TED Ed talk on the life of plankton. You'll find a link in the description of this video. Now we're gonna check out the exciting world of the rocky shore ecosystem. Many animals and plants live on the rocky shores in the area between the high and low tide called the intertidal zone. These organisms must be able to cope with problems of not only one environment, but two. They're pounded by waves, exposed to extreme temperatures and salinity, flooded by seawater and exposed to drying air twice every 24 hours. They may also be exposed to fresh water during rainfall or flood events. In addition, they have to avoid being eaten by birds, mollusks and crabs at low tide and by fish and other marine life at high tide. Several distinct microhabitats exist within rocky shore habitats each with its own survival challenges for plants and animals living there. Some of these microhabitats have distinct shapes which influence how life will survive there. Yet other microhabitats have high roughness where the terrain goes up and down, providing plenty of places for animals and plants. Let's have a look at some of the species found in these rocky shores. Blue periwinkle. These are mollusks found clustered together at high tide, and they like to eat algae or lichens. Sooty oyster catcher. Seen on the rocky shorelines, it feeds on limpets and mussels and has a bright red bill. Rose barnacle. 
grows to 20 millimeters wide and 12 millimeters high. This is a mollusk tinged with pink. Mulberry whelks like to eat the empty shells. Green zoanthid. This is bright green, it's related to corals and it filters food from water. Now that we've discussed all that, take some time to look into pages 8 to 13 in your passport and complete the activities. Pause the video now and check them out. Great job! Thanks for tuning in to this lesson of the Coastal Discovery Van. Until next time, keep coasting!